On the behalf of my collaborators, I'm excited to present our paper that focuses on the collaborative experiences of programmers with visual impairments. Our work was a collaboration among researchers at the University of Michigan School of Information and was supported by a gift from Google. We want to preface the presentation with the motivation behind our work and the contributions our research makes. Software engineering and programming in the workplace is highly collaborative in nature. It requires developers to work in collaboration with other developers, designers, and their managers. However, accessibility research thus far has focused on understanding the use of programming tools in non-collaborative contexts. On the other hand, the fields of software engineering and CSEW have a long history of research and collaboration among programmers, but these spaces have assumed cited programmers as the default. Our research tries to address the gap in these fields by going beyond the use of individual tools and activities and looking at the ignored context of collaboration among sighted and visually impaired programs. As part of our research, we conducted semi-structured interviews with 23 programmers with visual impairments. 19 of our participants identified as male and four participants identified as female. Our interview questions focused on participants' programming background, collaborative experiences, and the tools they used in collaboration. We make several contributions through our research. In the interest of time, this presentation discusses the factors that shaped participants' choice of programming tools, the logistics of collaboration during code writing and UI development, and how accessibility challenges and the nature of the workplace can shape health-related interactions. We request you to refer to the paper for further details. Let's first dive into the factors that shaped programmers' choice of code editors. Accessibility of programming tools obviously played a big role in participants' choices. However, participants shared that even the most accessible programming editors could take up considerable time to install and set up. Oftentimes, the software would be accessible, but their installers were not. For instance, several programming tools only offered a wizard installer, which is not screen reader friendly. Participants' choice also depended on several social and logistical factors. For example, they would often use the IDE that their team was using, even if it was not the most accessible alternative for them. This is demonstrated by a quote from one of our participants. I have both Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 editions installed on my computer, and sometimes I'll need to bounce into 2019 because it works a little bit better for some accessibility. But I make sure that any of the builds and everything I do really comes from 2017 because we want it to be in the same thing that everybody is using. End quote. The quote reveals that the participant had to work across two different Visual Studio editions because one offered better accessibility while the other ensured compatibility with his team's work. Participants also used several non-programming software, such as Jira, Slack, Zoom, and internal organization tools for code reviewing. While these tools were not used to write code, they directly informed participants' programming responsibilities. And thus, accessibility breakdowns in these tools had a direct bearing on their ability to perform efficiently. Based on our findings related to software use, we share two design recommendations. First, we strongly recommend ensuring accessibility during the installation process. Designers should consider making the installers accessible, documenting accessibility features of programming tools, and making this documentation readily available to programmers with visual impairments. Second, we urge designers to take into account the various social and logistical factors that shape participants' choice of programming tools. Participants are often switching and changing tools depending on their team's needs. They're also using multiple tools in parallel. It is imperative to ensure that programmers are able to operate and switch across these various tools fluidly for an accessible and pleasant user experience. Let's now talk about how our participants collaborated with their cited colleagues on various programming activities. In the paper, we report findings for five common activities, code writing and styling, code reviews, pair programming, software design, and UI development. In this presentation, we'll first discuss their experiences in code writing, and then we'll talk about UI development. 
Participants shared that they had developed unique strategies like adding descriptive comments to identify the changes made by their colleagues. They would also request their colleagues to follow their preferred strategies during code writing. On the other hand, to maintain readability for their cited teammates, participants would indent the code and style it visually. Over time, this resulted in code styling rules that were suited for both sighted and visually impaired programmers. We bring up this finding because currently the code styling guidelines are intended to improve code navigation and readability for sighted programmers. Publicly available code styling guides by big companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft mention that code should be indented and visually styled for better readability. Such styling is not relevant for programmers with visual impairments, but they adopt it nonetheless. We recommend that code style guides should formally incorporate the strategies preferred by programmers with visual impairments to present a more inclusive document. Plus, this would also make sighted programmers aware of the practices of programmers with visual impairments. Moving on to the activity of UI development, we noted that it was fairly challenging due to its visual nature and was exacerbated by inaccessible design documents, which may lack specifications on pixel distances, colors, fonts, etc. Without these specifications, participants had to seek sighted assistance to spot check the UI they had created. Plus, UI developer tools are often not designed for screen readers. They do not announce relative distances between UI elements and largely rely on interactions like drag and drop, which is not accessible for people with visual impairments. Thus, to make UI development more accessible, it is important to keep in mind that requests for spot checking can seem minor, but add up. They can reinforce ableist perceptions in collaborative contexts. It is important to consider the social and personal implications of accessible UI tools and foreground these during the design process. We also point designers and researchers to UI authoring tools created by programmers with visual impairments for programmers with visual impairments. For example, the Developer Toolkit, a popular NVDA add-on, is a wonderful example of a tool that seeks to enable programmers with visual impairments to develop UIs inde independently. In the final part of the presentation, we want to discuss how accessibility challenges shaped help interactions in the workplace. We noted that decisions to seek help and the nature of help was shaped by social and technical factors. For example, availability of accessible tools enabled participants to seek help only for minor things and did not foreground their disability. If participants perceived that their organization was committed to accessibility and inclusion, they felt more comfortable seeking help. On the other hand, if participants thought that the organization was disabled unfriendly, they felt uncomfortable seeking assistance because they felt it drew attention to their disability instead of highlighting the access barriers present in the workplace. Access challenges also prevented our participants from help giving in the workplace. Collaborative activities like pair programming and code reviews assume reciprocity of help. In fact, providing help to colleagues is an informal expectation in the workplace and means to establish competence. But lack of assistive technologies on colleagues' computers and inaccessible tools prevented our participants from providing help in real time. They had to adopt workarounds to assist their colleagues, which could delay synchronous help and have implications about their abilities as a programmer and team member. Therefore, when designing assistive technologies and collaborative tools, we recommend considering ways to foster synchronous and real-time assistance as means of conveying competence and reciprocating the help received. This brings us to the end of our presentation. We thank our participants without whom this research would not have been possible.